I am Siddhartha Dash or Sid Dash from Chartist Research. And today we're going to talk about uh, power plant valuation, operational analytics, and how to think about power plant pricing, valuation, risk management, et cetera. With that, uh, for that, I have uh, with me a really experienced uh, professional in this area, Spiros. And he, uh, Spiros, could you just introduce yourself? Yeah, Spiros Maragos. Uh, I have been in the energy marketing area for uh, more than 25 years, doing valuation of assets, natural gas storage facilities, power plants, other assets, and uh, so on. And primarily, I have been in the quant structuring and risk management uh, area all these years. Great. Thank you, Spiros. So that provides us a you know context. As you know, power plant pricing is a complex area. There are many different challenges. There's the whole issue of inputs converting into uh, in, into outputs which are which are of a different time and dimension, as well as the fact that we have to think in power plants with different time dimensions as it were. So with that, very quickly, Spiros, how do you how do you, what is your core approach to this problem? How do you approach pricing uh, pricing a power plant? I mean, what are the key issues, key dimensions, and how do you harmonize the challenges of the fact that you sell in short term, uh, you sell short term power, but you 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 need to potentially think about long-term contracts in inputs and other things. So. Yeah. Now, thank you for giving me the opportunity, Sid. So uh, here's what I have to say. You know, currently we witness massive investment in uh, renewables, right? However, for the foreseeable future, gas-fired plants will remain part of the backbone of uh, power production. Uh, and therefore, we need to be able to estimate the value of power plants, of gas-fired power plants, you know, the, the contracts assigned on them and so on. To estimate the value of a gas-fired uh, power plant or the value of the contract signed on a power with a power plant owner, and we need to remember, you know, sometimes you know it is one way that uh, the capabilities of the plant allow us to run it, and another less aggressive that uh, the owner of the plant, the terms that they put in the contract. Um, so that means we have to estimate in order to come up with uh, the value of the gas fire plant, we have to estimate future cash flows associated with that power plant. And these cash uh, flows are in turn a function of both the mark, the current market condition and prices, of course, and the uncertainty of power price levels in the future and gas prices, of course, right, which is the, the raw material. And the speed and flexibility with which the technical characteristics of the power plant allow it to take advantage of the changing market environment. So the technical characteristics, the speed with which the power plant ramps up, uh, the emissions, and most of all the heat rate, uh, are very uh, uh, focal in, uh, and central to the discussion of valuation. So to roughly, you, we can say that the value of power plants has two components, uh, the intrinsic and the extrinsic value. Uh, the intrinsic value refers to the value that can be observed and hedged against current forward market prices, both power as well as the gas prices, right? The extrinsic value though, it refers to all the other value that can be generated by the flexibility of the asset to respond to changes in forward prices, in, for, in, in a changing market environment, but cannot be observed or hedged at the time of the valuation, right? So, so those two are uh, the two components. Now, uh, the gross margin of power plant, we're gonna talk in more detail later, is determined by the difference of the power price versus uh, the quantity of the gas, and that's a function of uh, the heat rate that is used for uh, the production cost. And the, the cost, uh, like we said, is fuel, uh, emissions, variable operating costs, and several other things. So uh, we said that uh, the value of power plants has two components. Uh, and uh, But at the same time, power plant valuation has two phases. The first is we need to come up with the original curves. You know, we have uh, power prices that have uh, monthly granularity, and we need to go to the hourly, the prices at the hourly level. So the first is because those are not market uh, traded, you know, we don't, we have uh, market prices for the monthly uh, power prices, but not for the hourly. 
So we have to go from the monthly to the hourly granularity. And second, based on these hourly scalp prices that we're going to derive, uh, we're going to optimize the generation uh, asset, at least for the intrinsic uh, component of the, the value. So first, we're, how do we turn the power prices, the monthly power prices, into hourly curves? Well, a way to do it, and uh, there may be other ways that uh, and that others use, but one way is to use historical real-time prices, right, at this location. Let's say for the past three years. Why the past three years? Because, you know, uh, the further back you go, we're talking about the different markets, but three years is uh, a good uh, uh, rule of thumb uh, for uh, to collect real price, real-time uh, prices. Uh, for the location, of course, uh, where the power plant is. And how far do you think you want to project this these numbers to? Yeah, what I'm going to do with these numbers is that they're going to create the daily and the weekly shape. You know, I'll scalp the weekly and the and then using the the forward power prices, right? I'm going to make sure that I'm going to adjust them in such a way for the duration that I have uh, monthly prices, but at the same, all these prices are going to be scalped. Right. And I need to make sure that once I have created the daily, you know, the on peak, the off peak, the holidays, the weekends and so on. Once I put all these hourly prices that all of them together, they come back to the monthly price from which I started. You know, I don't want otherwise there's something wrong with uh, my valuation. Right. So that's how I create them. And I go out as far as my uh, uh, liquid uh, forward curve, uh, power curves allow me to go. Um, so, so once I have come up with my hourly prices for the duration of the contract or for three, four, 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 five years, you know, for as long as I have liquidity, then the next thing is to say, well, based uh, on the basis of that basic intrinsic scenario, how do I optimize my uh, asset operation? And before I even do that, what are the constraints? What are, what are the parameters within which I operate? Here is a list, a non-exhaustive list, uh, other contracts, uh, because we said it is the asset itself, it is also the contract that you sign with a, with a power plant operator. So the moment you have signed the contract, this is your guiding uh, light, you go by the contract, not the superior capabilities of the asset. So uh, uh, we have several components. What is the maximum capacity that I can run the plant? What is the minimum? You know, because sometimes I want to run it at minimum capacity because I don't want to turn it off. Very important, as I said before, you know, the heat rate, very crucial. Uh, that, that's one of the major components of uh, uh, value for the power plant. Uh, the lower the heat rate, meaning the fewer MMBTUs, the less gas that I need to produce uh, uh, a megawatt of power, uh, I mean, the more economical, you know, the, the, the best uh, value I get out of the plant. But it is not only that. As I said earlier, we have variable operational and maintenance, meaning the, uh, the, the cost that comes with each hour of run, uh, you know, uh, there, there's some cost associated uh, with it in, in the range of a few dollars. Then we have startup costs. But then what uh, startup do you have? Do you have a cold startup and, or warm startup? You know, warm startup is when you have it for, I suspect it depends on the definition, you know, uh, if I remember well, you know, some use it less than 12 hours or, or so, it is a warm startup. If it is more than that, it is considered the cold startup. And in this case, if it is cold, you, you need more startup gas, whereas if it is warm, you need less. So that's part of your consideration. Uh, then it is, you have the ramp up rate, how fast? Fast, the power plant uh, can get into operation, you know, and or the ramp down rate. Then once you start operating a plant, a power plant, it has to stay on for a minimum amount of time. You know, it is not stop and go, right? And once you turn the power plant off, it has to be down for a minimum downtime. You know, all these are part of the contracts, you know, because right. uh, right. owners do not want the, their uh, their asset to be abused. Then you have to consider for, and that's part of your cost, uh, emission costs. 
uh, especially in the Northeast US. And, you know, uh, this is evolving regulation in this area. So you have to take into consideration, well, for me to produce uh, a, me a megawatt hour of uh, power, well, in addition to my, uh, in, to my gas cost, to my uh, VONM, variable operational maintenance, I also have some associated cost for, for emissions. And then you have uh, the maximum starts per day, right? Uh, so some of them are taken care of by the minimum downtime. You know, if you turn it down and you have to be down for 10 hours, that takes care of that. But it depends on the contract. Maximum start per day, maximum per month, per year for the duration of the contract. At which point, if you have for a year, let's say, no more than 150 starts, you, start, you have to start considering, well, I, I'll run the plant if I make, after all my expenses and everything, a dollar during the winter here in Ercot in Texas, right? But I only have 150 starts, right? So I, I had better keep my powder dry, so to speak, for the summer when I expect to make $30 per megawatt hour from a start. So this is a, a post-optimization. Uh, you know, you do your optimization, but then you could do a post-optimization. Yeah, I just to I just to your overarching seasonality and sh overarching schedule, if you will. Exactly. Uh, just with that, I mean, as you go through this, a, a little bit of a question there. You talked about the gas costs and the gas dynamics, but the gas is a part of a marketplace, so it'll have a curve of its own, and uh, you know you you will be look you'll be potentially looking at uh, gas price today, but gas price into the future. How far do you go in that future when you're thinking about gas imports? Are you are are you how do you man? How do you look at the whole gas input price dynamics? Thank you for that question. So we said earlier uh, that I do my valuation to all the way out for as long as I have uh, liquid power uh, power prices uh, curves. Of course, if my contract is shorter, of course I stop uh, at the shorter at the nearest uh, date. But uh, otherwise, I go all the way to the uh, to the end of uh, to the liquidity limit of uh, the power curves. The interesting thing about gas, it is more liquid than uh, uh, than power. So the limitation is power, not uh, the, the gas curves. Now, given that I'm talking about in uh, intrinsic valuation right now at this point, uh, I'm using the monthly prices for gas. Now, out of this optimization that I'm going to do, uh, my, my results, my optimal results may be that I only run the, the plant for half the month. So I'm not going to hedge gas for the whole month. I'm going to hedge for my intrinsic value, at least, uh, only for for half a contract, right? Only half of the contracts for uh, for gas. And if it is two-thirds, I'm going to do two-thirds of gas if I run it and so on. Because basically my valuation is going to tell me how much gas I need and uh, what months. But my guiding principle there is uh, the... Uh, you know, the screen or if I am at Henry Hub or, you know, the prices that they have for gas, the monthly ones. Uh, and of course, well, the other thing that I was, uh, I meant to say is that the optimization will give us, as I said earlier, operating hours of the power plant, you know, gas consumption, power production, and all these things. And this is the intrinsic value of the contract. That's all I've done so far, right? I took uh, the current uh, uh, power prices, I sculpt them, and uh, I apply to them uh, the optimization. Now, what do I do? And, uh, and, you know, it depends. You know, everybody has to do their own analysis there, you know, for the extrinsic valuation of the hourly spark spread. Now, I have, on the intrinsic, uh, for my intrinsic profile, I have the hours of operation. So what I do is, for the intrinsic, extrinsic valuation of the hourly spark spread, we're using hourly volatilities, Right? I'm trying to find the one conservative way to do your extrinsic valuation is you go, you find the hours that you run under the intrinsic scenario, and then find the value of uh, uh, you find the value of uh, of the hourly options. And how do you do them? What's you have a spread there, right? You need hourly uh, power volatility. You use. Uh, uh, the gas volatility, you know, from the, the spot prices, because now we're into the the spot month, right? And of course, the, and then you have a correlation between the two. So how how do you come up with the correlation? Because this is the more sensitive uh, part, you know. In a market, the users know well you can go for accurate 
to the extent that you feel the, the correlation of values that you believe that uh, represent the behavior of uh, gas and the relative behavior on gas and power in that market. If you don't know the market well, then you come up, then you need to use a conservative number. A conservative number is a correlation of 90%, which assigns less value to the contract. Yeah, go so, ahead. So just trying to sum, summarize, if you will, or trying to bring together uh, the, the some of the valuation challenges that you've, you've uh, and the mechanics that you've highlighted, uh, uh, you know, looking at the uh, looking at the forward curves, looking at the gas gas inputs, then looking at the correlation dynamics. Clearly, the correlation dynamics is a central challenge and is a very big integrative issue uh, because if you know the market well, you know the correlations and you have a framework for that. Uh, we uh, obviously there are statistical techniques we uh, you know we didn't go too far down on the simulation techniques and so on but I think what we now have is a overarching integrated view of uh, the the power plant models if you will hopefully and we can we can take a snapshot clearly there are many more details and clearly everyone uh, you know clearly, the the uh, you know there are many details that will go into individual operating environment dynamics, into the into uh, into the network and the system in which all of this is being put together, and many others. Uh, but hopefully, we what Spiros has done here is give you an integrative snapshot in in our discussion about what are the main drivers and key uh, fair structures to price and think about price and think about. When you are when you are trying to think about pricing and valuation of power plants, uh, we hope bring that to a close, all too short, and hopefully we could have uh, gone into a lot more detail. But I'm sure uh, anyone interested can follow up with uh, specific conversations and take it forward. Thank you.